Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. So while we're dealing with some of the Omnima and OmniView issues, which by the way, Ryan Gulovich, uh, one of the commenters offered to um, reprogram those ICs for me, those EPROMs for me. I really appreciate that. Um, I think I'm going to order an eraser programmer and do it here and, and actually capture it on a video just so everyone can see the process of erasing and programming ROMs. Um, but if you could get me those two files, that would be huge. I thank you and I greatly appreciate that. Um, so it's Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. I hope you're going to spend some time with your family today and have some good times, get some good food. Um, I thought I'd make a quick video about something I talked about in the first video, which is uh, the Atari Assembler Editor Cartridge. I had promised you we were going to get into that a little bit and do some programming with that. So why don't we do that today? But before we plug it in and start actually using it, let's give you a little background on it. Um, I did a little research on this cartridge. So this is a cartridge-based development system uh, programmed by a woman named Kathleen O'Brien. Kudos to her. Of Shepardson Microsystems. Okay, So Shepardson Microsystems uh, Incorporated was a small company producing operating systems and programming languages for CPM. That's a really old computer system. Uh, the Atari 8-bit family and the Apple II computers. Um, they're mostly noted for the original Apple II disk operating system, um, Atari Basic, and the Atari disk operating system. So they contributed quite a bit to the early Atari and Apple operating systems and Basic for Atari. Um, the company was founded by Robert Shepardson in Saratoga Springs, New York. The company had been hired by Atari to help fit Microsoft 6502 Basic into an 8K cartridge something the programmers at Atari were struggling with. Um, instead, it was suggested uh, that an entirely new version of BASIC uh, be designed, which ultimately became Atari BASIC. While Atari BASIC was being written by O'Brien's husband, Paul Lawton, um, Kathleen O'Brien uh, was working on the assembler editor. Okay, The editor, listen to this, the editor was written by hand, by punching codes into a punch tape machine, running the tape through an EEPROM burner, and then testing the resulting ROM on an Atari 800. Pretty cool. The cartridge was completed before Atari Basic, and O'Brien spent some time working on portions of that project as well. So this lady, Kathleen O'Brien, I'd love to interview her, by the way, talk about some of her experiences. Um, quite a bit of work, quite a bit of work for Atari. Um, as part of the work uh, on the Atari, a number of the common routines were copied in the Atari's operating system. Cool. So some of the shortcomings, uh, a lot of people have, have talked bad about the assembler editor cartridge. Some of the shortcomings are its inability to define macros, to organize code, the inability to link multiple modules together into a larger program, and the assembly compile times were slow, which is true. It does. It is pretty slow, but... I can tell you that when I used the assembler editor cartridge years ago, I didn't write full-fledged, you know, commercial programs or applications with it. It was usually used for writing small subroutines that you would then incorporate into basic to get speed into the basic program. And as a matter of fact, it says, according to the Wikipedia article I read this morning, that the Atari manual, maybe we can find out which manual this is and read it, uh, it recommends the assembler editor as a tool for writing subroutines to speed up Atari basic. So there you go. Um, later on, the Atari Macro Assembler was offered by Atari to provide better performance and more powerful features, such as macros. But it was a disk-based, copy-protected uh, software package, and it did not include an editor and debugger, so that kind of sucks. But Despite Atari's recommendation for only using the Atari Assembler Editor for writing small subroutines, commercial software was written using the Assembler Editor, um, such as the game Eastern Front. I don't remember that game. I know I can picture it in my mind, but I don't remember the gameplay. Uh, maybe we'll have to get a copy of that later on and play it and see how well they did. So there you go. Um, later on, I think the Shepardson Micro was, was reduced back down to a one-man operation, the owner. Uh, decided to shrink the company and bring it down to a small company, which then another company called Optimized Systems Software uh, was formed by um, Kathleen O'Brien, who wrote the assembler editor, and her husband. And the original source code 
So the editor assembler was licensed to their new company, Optimized System Software. And then based on that source code, they introduced the EASMD, the Edit Assemble Debug, um, their first uh, editor assembler from Optimized Systems. And I guess that was later then superseded by the Mac 65, Mac slash 65 assembler editor, which I would like to get my hands on that because it's a more mature uh, assembler editor debugger, faster supposedly. And from what I understand, um, actually it says it right here, uh, the Mac 65 is a 6502 editor assembler uh, originally released on disk in 1982 and then on a bank switched super cartridge in 1983, which included an integrated debugger and editor. And it was significantly faster than Atari's assemblers. So there you go. If anybody knows where you can get a copy of that, I'd love to get a copy of it. Actually, I'd like to get my hands on the cartridge. But in any way, so the assembler editor, not the best, but good enough to do subroutines and small programs, and that's what we're gonna do today. Uh, we're gonna pop the computer here and just take a quick look at the editor. We're gonna type a real simple program in, maybe something that modifies the, the registers and the CPU, and get some output from it, and uh, then we'll see how to list the program, write the program, some of its nuances, and uh, it'll be our start into this. So let's go, let's get into there and uh, take a look at the cartridge and do some editing. Don't go anywhere. All right. So here we go, guys. Assembler editor. Let's pop it in. Fire it up. So one thing you'll notice is right away you're presented with the edit. This is the actual editor where we type the programs in. Now. The editor is uh, very similar to BASIC, where you have to use line numbers for each one of your uh, programming statements. Okay, So basically, field one in the line of every assembly language program that you're using with the assembler editor um, is going to be the line number. Okay, So basically, you're going to use line numbers like BASIC, and then Field number two, you've got an optional label field. So sometimes you can use labels like loop. And then the third field is going to actually be your mnemonic. So for example, load accumulator. And then your fourth field is your operand, which is not always required. It depends on the instruction you're using. So for example, an, uh, an immediate mode addressing zero. And then common, uh, field number five, you can have an, uh, an actual comment. So for example, you could say, uh, you know, load zero into accumulator, something like that. So we've got five fields. The first field is the line number or the statement number as they call it. The second field is the loop, or I'm sorry, the label. The third field is the mnemonic. The fourth field is the operand, not always required depends on the instruction. And the fifth field is going to be your comment. Um, so for example, if we have a line number that we don't want to use a comment, and this is very important, I found this out the hard way as I started to use the assembler editor again. Um, you're going to use two spaces, so like this. So for example, um, <clears throat> clearing the carry bit. Okay. And so anyway, like basic, you can type the word list to get a listing of your program. If you just press enter, it says what. It doesn't know what to do. <laughs> so kind of annoying, that beep. Uh, but I thought you might want to see that. All right. So um, basically, this is where we're going to type the programs in. OK. So why don't we go ahead and use the new keyword, which again, similar to basic. We can start a new program. And all of your programs. Have to, you have to be, give it a starting address, the starting memory location of the machine language program. It's got to be high enough above uh, what's called the edit text buffer um, so that your, in memory, your program doesn't overlap with the actual editor assembler. So um, we'll get into that a little bit after we, we type in this little simple program here. I'll tell you how you can figure that out. Okay. So let's go ahead and start our program, line number 10. We're going to hit two spaces since we don't have a comment. And we're going to say asterisk equals, and we're going to use hex 1000. Our next command is going to be 
clear the carry bit. Uh, we're going to load the accumulator in immediate mode with a zero. And we're going to create a loop. So we're going to go ahead and use our label. And, and we're going to add with carry to the accumulator the number one. Uh, we're going to immediately compare that to see if it's three. And we're going to branch if it's not equal to three back to our loop. And line 70 is just going to be the end statement. So let's list our program. Now, one thing I do want to mention is that I'm not going to be actually teaching you guys assembly language today. Um, we may do that in some future episodes. This is more of an intention. The intention of this video is to more to sh more so to show you the assembler editor cartridge, how it functions, and just demonstrating some basic stuff that we can do with the assembler editor cartridge. Like maybe in the next video we'll type in um, a real simple program that we can then you know assemble out to an actual uh, program that we can use from basic. We'll save it to disk and then we'll we'll have it where we can actually call it from our basic programs. Uh, but let's talk about the next. Uh, portion of what we're going to do here once we have the the source code typed in and that is we want to the next command which is the ASM command which is basically it assembles the source program that we entered into a machine language object program now I purposely left some errors in this uh, program I don't know if you caught that already but I left them in there on purpose because I want you to see what happens when we try to assemble this listing with those errors. So the way you do that is you type ASM. And what that does is it goes through and it attempts to assemble your source code into the machine language co code. And you can see right away we've got an error that popped up on line 30 where we tried to load the accumulator with zero. So let's take a quick look at that. Did it, does anybody see the problem, by the way, with that? Okay. Remember I told you that every line, uh, there's a certain number of fields, field one through five. Well, field one is a label. And if you're not using a label, you need to have two spaces. So I, that's what we did here. I didn't actually put two spaces on this command. And that was the problem. So now let's try and assemble it again. And you can see we assembled without any errors. Now the way that we actually execute this program is we type bug and bug gets us into the debugger. All right. Now if you remember we started our program at memory address 1000 and hex. So what we're going to tell the debugger to do is we're going to tell it to execute that address. And there we go. So that quickly what it did was it executed our program at 1000 and you can see uh, what it does is once the program executes it gives us the status of our registers a equals 3 x equals 0 0 y 0 0 uh, p 33 and s 0 0 so the only register we're going to focus on today is the accumulator and you can see that the accumulator is left with a 3 so if we get back to our editor by using x x gets you out of the debugger and we list, let's talk about what this program did. So we clear the carry flag. That's our first command. And then the second uh, command, or the second uh, mnemonic that we do is we load the accumulator with zero. We're setting the accumulator to zero. Then we're setting up a loop. And we can see that with our label loop. And the loop is going to basically add with a carry a number one to what's in the accumulator and store that number back into the accumulator. So if the accumulator started with zero, we're adding one. We should end up with one in the accumulator. And then on line 50, we're doing a compare to the number three, immediate, immediate addressing mode. And we're going to, the next line after that says branch if it's not equal to what we compare to back to loop. So we're going back to loop. The accumulator has one. We're going to add another one to it, which is going to end up two in the accumulator. We're doing a compare three. We're going to branch again because it's obviously not three. We're going to back up to the loop. And we're going to end up with our carry flat our, with our accumulator at three, which at that point we fall through the branch to our end command. All your assembly language programs need to end with an end command, by the way. Very important. Okay. All right. So one of the other things I want to show you in the debugger is how you can step through your program 
uh, line by line or cycle by cycle, operation by operation. And that is instead of going to 1000, like we did before to run the program, like this, we're going to do the T command, which is trace 1000. Now watch what happens. You see what happened there? So by tracing the program, you can actually see line by line what our program is doing. So line or memory location 1000, we're loading the accumulator with zero. Memory location 1002, we're adding to the, to the, with the carry flag of 01 and so on. So this is a good way that you can trace through your program as it's executing and you can watch the values of the registers in the CPU and you can kind of figure out what's going on you know, command by command, memory location by memory location. I wanted you to see that trace command. Now, let's go back to our program and let's modify, let's make this program count to 255. Anybody have a, an idea on how we can do that? Um, well, it's very simple. Let's change line 50. Instead of comparing to 3, let's compare to 255. Will that do it? So what do you predict will happen? Well, did we get the results we were looking for? I don't think so. Why not? Anybody have an idea? Hmm. We changed it to 255. We executed. Why is our accumulator still at three? Hmm. Well, remember guys, we're not in basic. <laughs> this thing is not being interpreted every time we make a change. When we make a change, we must assemble the program into object code. Now let's go into the debugger and let's run it. Now look at our accumulator, FF255 and hex. Just wanted you to see that. That's a common mistake that are made by um, beginners using assembly language there. They get so caught up in what they're doing, they make a change, they try and debug it, it's not working, they beat their head against the wall, and they don't realize that, oh, I have to assemble it. So now let's trace the program, and I want you to see the voluminous amount of information that's going to happen now, being that we're, we're going through this loop, you know, 255 times. See the difference now? And if you look at the, accum the accumulator, you can see it counting up, which, by the way, on the Atari Control 1, pauses, and restarts the listing. I believe this works in BASIC too. If you have a long BASIC program and you want to stop and pause, or you want to stop and start the listing or pause, pause and re-begin re the listing. See our accumulator going up in hex, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, to A, to B, and so on and so on. This is why your trace is very important. We're going to go ahead and break that because I'm not going to sit here and watch it the entire time. But anyway, so there you go. Real simple program. All right. I don't want to get too far into it today. I just wanted to give you guys this quick intro into the assembler editor. Um, we'll come back next time and we'll do something a little bit more involved. We'll print some text out to the screen, which involves a lot more setup on the code side. Um, and then I think at some point we will do some... some uh, instructional videos on actually getting into the mnemonics and actually finding out what each one of these mnemonics stand for for the 6502. We're going to look at the registers, what each one of those mean. Um, we're going to look at the X and Y register, which are used as index counters, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, guys, listen, I like the assembler editor cartridge. It may not be the fastest. It may not be the most robust, but you know what? You can write a lot of your programs in BASIC and then develop some of your subroutines in the assembly language and get those out as uh, uh, COM files and then you can call those from your, your BASIC program and get some raw speed. Um, and you know what we're going to do too? We're also going to do some graphic stuff in BASIC and we'll do the equivalent little mini program in assembly language to see how much faster it executes and do some comparisons that way. So anyway, I hope you guys like this video. Um, we've got some good ideas, like I said, for the stuff that's coming up. If you have any ideas or if there's some stuff you want to see, you know, give me a comment, let me know, and I'll throw it in here as well. All right? Take care, guys. See you in the next video. Uh, real quick, guys.
um, I just realized as I was editing this video, I found uh, a podcast for Kathleen O'Brien from uh, Kevin Sabitz. I'm going to include that link down in the description. It's a complete interview with her. Uh, it's very interesting. I recommend that you go check out that podcast after watching this video. So I just wanted to give you a quick update at the end of this video and let you know that I found it. So go check it out. See you next time. Thanks.